Now it's been a while since I've sat down and done a traditional YouTube video here in this room so it is good to be back and what a better way than to do it with an unboxing. Now if you're not aware I've recently just come back from Singapore and I did film some vlogs which I will have linked down below in a playlist that I made for the trip. In the part two video that is when I went to Lux Lexicon which is a huge Hermes reseller in Singapore so if you're wanting to look at some bag candy that's the video for you. But the bag that I did pick up in Singapore is from the Goyard Boutique there, which ironically is our closest store to Australia. So if you want to get a bag from Goyard and you don't want to go all the way to Europe or any other place in the Northern Hemisphere, this is the closest store. So go figure. But let's jump on in. But firstly, if you are new here, my name is Connor and on my channel, I like to talk about all things luxury. So if that's something you're into, I would love it if you could hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you're notified when I bring out new videos. And if you're returning, welcome back to my channel. Now, I won't make you guys wait. I'll just do the unboxing straight away. So it comes in this green Goyard shopping bag. Ooh, very nice. And with the little yellow handles. Ooh, yellow dust bag. Um, now, Goyard do not do boxes for their bags. They do for their SLGs, um, but their bags always just come in a dust bag. Um, and then this is the little proof of purchase to prove that I purchased. <laughs> do you guys want to guess what's inside? <laughs> I'll put you out of your misery. Oh my god, look at that blue on the camera! Ooh, it's so nice. So this is the Cap Vert bag, I think. I mean, it's spelled like Cap Vert, but I think that's how you say it. And it is a little, like, camera messenger bag. It has a little Goyard swing tag on there. It has the composition. Um, but this bag in this blue colour, guys, like, match made in heaven. I've been dying to take all of this off ever since I got the bag, so I'll do that for you. So obviously this bag is blue and it's got silver hardware. I'll just show you the little details that they've got here. And we'll take the plastic off this little thing together. I'll take this little zip protector thing off. There's like plastic on the back of this zip thing. I don't know how to take that off. Look at that shiny hardware against the blue. Oh my God, it's so cool. It's so fresh. Ooh, it smells so good. Alrighty, let's put the strap together. Put the little stopper on. So, like I said before, this is the Cap Vare, um PM little camera bag. This is in the colour Blue Ciel, or Bleu Ciel, as I should say, in A La Francais. Um, look, oh my god, it's so pretty. I'm wearing black too, so it pops even more. Oh my god! Oh, this colour is just like me, right? It's so blue. Oh my god! And then the inside is even better because it's like this bright yellow contrast color oh my god that is so pretty and then the pocket there oh my god <laughs> i'm so excited so it's you know a pretty standard camera bag layout this is i guess the front or the back depending on how you want to wear it and then there is like a large slip pocket here which is also lined in the yellow it's like a um like a cotton canvasy material and then I have a iPhone 15 Pro, which fits perfectly in this little slip pocket here. I guess you could wear it on the front or the back, depending on how you want to access your phone, probably the back. So that fits there. And then on the inside, it is just one big open compartment with a slip pocket there. And it says, let's see if you can see it. Probably not showing, um, but it says Goyard Paris made in France. And then on the inside, there's like a serial number embossed into the back. Um, and then I guess this is, you know, one of my favorite parts because you know, I love a contrast stitch. The all on the strap is like white contrast stitching all on like the leather parts of the bag is the contrast stitching. Be still my beating heart. <laughs> And then the actual monogramming is just the classic Goyard 
print, which I think they call it, oh, they call it something, I can't remember, I'll put it up on the screen here. Now with Goya, they are one of those brands where they don't have prices listed on their website. They do have all of the products they do sell on the website, just no prices. So um, I'll let you know what this costs just because you don't know until you know, right? Um, but first the receipt does come in this like little silver and silver foil press receipt holder. And then this bag um, on the receipt, it says SAC Cap Vert PM2 Blue CL, and it costs 3,300 Singaporean dollars. Um, in Singapore, same as Australia, they include their tax in the retail price. Um, and then this converted on the day in Australian dollars to I think 3,600 and $80 or something like that. And then Singapore also have a tax scheme where you get a portion of their tax, their tax back, which equated to 6.5%, which after that refund came back, I think it was about $280. So what did I actually pay? Let me just add it up. So I think in the end I paid about 3,400 Australian dollars, so hundred dollars more than their Singapore retail price, which is pretty good. That's what I would expect to pay. And you're probably thinking, oh my God, that is so much money for a canvas bag. Go to the Louis Vuitton website. You try to find something under $4,000 in canvas. I think you won't. Um, so it's actually quite, you know, in the terms of luxury scheme, I was quite happy to pay that. And guys, like, Look how beautiful this is. Look how blue. Oh my God, it's so blue. I did it. I thought it was going to be like more of like a sky blue, like a little bit, like not as light as my peekaboo, like a shade in between, but it's so like this beautiful, like vibrant, not royal blue, maybe a shade before royal blue, but oh my God, it's just so gorgeous. And the silver hardware. Oh, 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 oh. I just can't get over it. Oh my God. <laughs> Now, if you've ever shopped in a Goyard boutique, this is actually my second time shopping in one. The first time when I was in Paris, my friend Stella who came with me, she really wanted a Saint Louis tote. We went to the Saint Honoré store. Notorious for lines. Everyone says you wait hours and hours and hours, which I'm sure that does happen 90% of the time. The day we went though, when I was in Paris, it was in the end, oh no, the start of May. So it was springtime. We probably waited in line maybe five minutes. It was not long at all. There was maybe a couple in front of us or two couples in front of us and we went straight in. So even if we had to wait there for 20 minutes like for that kind of store, because it's to be expected, I wouldn't mind, but we were in straight away. And when we went in, the sales associate was very, it was very transactional. It was like, what are you looking for? Yep. What size? Yep. Comes in these colors. Which color? They show you like a sample card of all the colors that they have in the canvas. Yep. Cool. I'll go grab it. Comes back. Do you like it? Yep. Okay, let's buy it. Like it's very transactional like that. So I was not going into this boutique thinking I'm gonna get this, you know, amazing magic carpet experience because I just know how they operate. They do have an almost Hermes-like nature to them. This is just how I feel in the shops. Maybe you guys have um, a better experience. Maybe because I knew I was a tourist in both scenarios, they, I don't know, save it more for locals. I'm not sure, but it wasn't a deterrent putting it that Put it that way for shopping there um but i actually went to this boutique in singapore the night before i had this appointment organized um and the shops in singapore they close at 10 o'clock which amazing compared to australia when the supermarket closes at six o'clock on a good day um so i went there and there was no one in the store there was three sales associates inside the store kind of looking like you know they were looking for something to do. Um, and it was 8.30 at night. The shop was obviously closing an hour and a half. And I waited in the line just to see, you know, just to have a look in there before I went into the appointment. Uh, and the sales associate came out and they said, we're not taking clients at this time. And I was like, uh, why? <laughs> like, there was no one in there. And they were just like, oh. And I said, oh, are you guys shutting soon? And they go, no, we're closed at 10, but we're not taking clients at this time. So I was like, I feel like if I were just to walk in and get a bag, it would be very difficult. But nonetheless, the next day, my beautiful friend Raina from the channel Raindrop Raina, I'll link it down below. She had organized an appointment with her sales associate to put two of these bags aside um, at like early in the morning. So we're basically the first ones there. And we walked in and I'm so thankful that Raina did that because I don't know if I would just be able to walk in and get it. I just don't know what Jedi mind tricks I'd be playing on that day, but her sales associate had put a, a 
put aside this blue bag and then the same bag, but in the black with the tan or the gold trim around it. I do love that combo, but when I looked at the bags, I just knew that the blue one suited this bag, obviously suited me better. And I thought like the other one was more sensible, but this one was more fun, more me. Um, so I automatically just gravitated to this. The sales associate there, I think his name was Joey. He goes, well, do you want to try both on? And I was like, no, I tried on the black and the gold one. And I was like, I like the bag. I like where it sits. I like the size and everything, but I want the blue one. And he was like, no worries. I'll get it ready for you. So he went and got it ready got my passport, did the whole tax thing. Um, and then Raina was trying on other bags, but yeah, it was, it was not a bad experience. It was very, it wasn't as transactional as Paris was. There was a bit of like, he was nice and, you know, have a look around, blah, 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 blah. But there's other, I think Fendi, for example, would put on more of a take a seat, we'll get you a drink, like that sort of thing. But it's a tiny store. You're not allowed to film in there. They have signs up, no cameras. There's like a security person standing everywhere. It's just a different environment in the store. And it's, if you want that bag or you want a bag from Goya, this is just what the experience is. Um, but in saying that, locals might have a much better time. Um, I did find just in Singapore in general, it was very, for the most part, transactional with shopping. Um, sales associates, it's just a different, it's a different nature there. Um, and it's just different to what it's like in Australia. Um, but I'm happy that I got what I wanted basically. But thank you so much for watching everyone. Please let me know your thoughts down below. Do you own any bags from Goya? Do you have any on your wish list? Let me know. I did share like a little teaser on my Instagram story, which if you're not following it, go head over and follow the closet by Connor underscore. Um, but I did put a little teaser photo up like, what did I get from Goya? <laughs> and um, a lot of people did guess this bag. So good on you. And a lot of guys that I follow on Instagram do also have this bag. So I'm in the Catbird Club now and I am loving it. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for watching everyone. And um, I can't wait to see you all very shortly in my next video. Bye.